Life is more than just running the aisles and speaking in other tongues. Life is moving on to perfection. Growing up unto the fullness of Him. Unto the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. It's called growing up. Everybody say growing up. Growing up. And David had to live with the consequences that he was the one that was responsible for their deaths. Did he backslide? Did he go to hell? Did he lose his mind? Did he commit suicide? Well, absolutely not. He went right on serving God. In the 24th chapter, and we looked at this, if David had a reason to justify his personal grudge against Saul because of Saul enmity towards him and trying to kill him and David fleeing from Saul if, if, if David's hurt because of, Paul's, of Saul's vengeance and vendetta and jealousy well when David was in this cave in verse 3 Saul came to the sheep coats by the way where was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. He said, Go and kill him, David. Go and kill him. The Lord said you can do unto him as it seems good to you. He said, God told you if you want to kill him, kill him. And David, David's personal hurt because of Saul's vendetta against him, driving him out, taking his wife away from him. David's personal grudge and his hurt. See, he could have covered all that up with a self-righteous spirit, got his sword out. This man will never kill the priest of the Lord again. And drove that sword through his heart. See, see he could have used that for an excuse to justify his personal vendetta against Saul. And, and, and the interesting part here is the Lord had already said to David that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. So, so David didn't take his life because he would never touch the Lord's anointed. The Lord's told him he can kill him if he wants to. Do anything to him you want to. I'm going to put him in your hands. You can do anything he wants to. If God would put your enemy in your hands to where you could do anything you wanted to to them, what would you do? If the Lord told you, said, you're free, do anything you want to do. He said, I've suffered from this, this fellow for the last time. This woman will never do that to me again. Huh. The Lord told me I could do that. You can never touch the Lord's anointed and be guiltless even if God told you you could. God didn't tell David that so David could kill Saul. God told David that to see how much David feared God and obeyed God's word. Because, because God had already said, Touch not mine anointed, and neither do my prophets no harm. So did David use the word of the Lord for an excuse to justify his own, his own rebellious spirit and his get-back spirit? See, this was a get-back spirit and a get-even spirit that wanted to kill his adversary. But David didn't have a get-back spirit or a get-even spirit. And when it was in his power to do so, mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee, all David did was take his sword and cut off a little corner of Saul's robe. He cut off a corner of his skirt. And it came to pass afterward, in verse 5, that David's heart smote him. See, God didn't tell David you can do anything that's all you want to to give David an excuse to kill the Lord's anointing. God, God told David that to give David an opportunity to test his own heart. And David cut off a corner of his robe and then he was sorry that he'd done that to the Lord's anointing because it's written, touch not mine anointed and neither do my prophets no harm. And he said unto his men, verse 6, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed. David never looked for an excuse to justify his own personal feelings. 
See, he never, he never looked for an excuse. The Lord told me I could kill him if I wanted to. He's, he's slain 85 priests of the Lord. 